I'm also a retired radical librarian, and one of my most treasured possessions, which I've had for 30 years, is the Penguin Book of Socialist Verse, which I don't know if it's still in print or not, but it should go back in print, if not. Uh, and so I resort to it quite frequently. And um, I'm going to re first read a short poem by a British poet born in 1926. I don't know if he's still with us. His uh, name is Christopher Loeb. And you probably, some of you have probably heard this before. Uh, it's called Know Thy Enemy. I've, I actually saw a poster that had this back in the late 60s here when I was a, a, a protester here at the University of Wisconsin. Know Thy Enemy. Know thy enemy. He does not care what color you are, provided you work for him, and yet you do. He does not care how much you earn, provided you earn more for him, and yet you do. He does not care who lives in the room at the top, provided he owns the building, and yet you strive. He will let you write against him, provided you do not act against him, and yet you write. He sings the praises of humanity, but knows machines cost more than men. Bargain with him, he laughs and beats you at it. Challenge him and he kills. Sooner than lose the things he owns, he will destroy the world. Smash capital now. But as you hasten to be free and build your commonwealth, do not forget the enemy who lies within yourself. Now, I was, had been planning to come here today and read um, some book, Bertolt Brecht, uh, and actually, it's, it's good that it didn't work out that way because quite a bit of it has been read and more of it should be read. Uh, but I was sent at the last minute by someone in the IWW who's not, who couldn't make it here today, a poem that she uh, discovered on a website called Freedom Archive in San Francisco, freedomarchive.org. And it's by someone named Emmanuel Ortiz, and I uh, beg your uh, forgiveness, I didn't have time to research who he was or what else he's written. Uh, he, he wrote it uh, on September 11th, 2002, and it's called Moment of Silence. Before I start this poem, I'd like to ask you to join me in a moment of silence in honor of those who died in the World Trade Center and the Pentagon last September 11th. I would also like to ask you to offer up a moment of silence for all those who have been harassed, imprisoned, disappeared, tortured, raped, or killed in retaliation for those strikes for the victims in both Afghanistan and the U.S. And if I, if I could just add one more thing, a full day of silence for the tens of thousands of Palestinians who have died at the hands of U.S.-backed Israeli forces over decades of occupation. Six months of silence for the million and a half Iraqi people, mostly children who have died of malnourishment or starvation as a result of an 11-year U.S. embargo against the country. Before I begin this poem, two months of silence for the blacks under apartheid in South Africa, where Homeland Security made them aliens in their own country. Nine months of silence for the dead in Hiroshima and Nagasaki where death rained down and peeled back every layer of concrete, steel, earth, and skin, and the survivors went on as if alive. A year of silence for the millions of dead in Vietnam, a people, not a war, for those who know a thing or two about the scent of burning fuel, their relatives' bones buried in it, their babies born of it. A year of silence for the dead in Cambodia and Laos, victims of a secret war, shh, say nothing, we don't want them to learn that they are dead. Two months of silence for the decades of dead in Colombia, whose names, like the corpses they rep once represented, have piled up and slipped off our tongues. Before I begin this poem, an hour of silence for El Salvador, an afternoon of silence for Nicaragua, two days of silence for the Guatemaltecos, none of whom ever knew a moment of peace in their living years. 45 seconds of silence for the 45 dead at Octial Chiapas. 25 years of silence for the 100 million Africans who found their graves far deeper in the ocean than any building could poke into the sky. There will be no DNA testing or dental records to identify their remains. And for those who were strung and swung from the heights of sycamore trees in the south, the north, the east, and the west. 100 years of silence. 
for the hundreds of millions of indigenous people from this half of right here whose land and lives were stolen in postcard perfect plots like Pine Ridge, Wounded Knee, Sand Creek, Fallen Timbers, or the Trail of Tears. Names now reduced to innocuous magnetic poetry on the refrigerator of our consciousness. Do you want a moment of silence? And we are all left speechless, our tongues snatched from our mouths, our eyes stapled shut. A moment of silence, and the poets have all been laid to rest, the drums disintegrating into dust. Before I begin this poem, you want a moment of silence. You mourn now as if the world will never be the same, and the rest of us hope to hell it won't be. Not like it always has been, because this is not a 9-11 poem. This is a 9-10 poem. It's a 9-9 poem, a 9-8 poem, a 9-7 poem. This is a 1492 poem. This is a poem about what causes poems like this to be written. And if this is a 9-11 poem, then... This is the September 11th, 9-11 poem for Chile, 1973. This is a September 12th poem for Stephen Biko in South Africa, 1977. This is a September 13th poem for the brothers in Attica Prison, New York, 1971. This is a September 14th poem for Somalia, 1992. This is a poem for every date that falls to the ground in ashes. This is a poem for the 110 stories that were never told. The 110 stories that history chose not to write in textbooks. The 110 stories that CNN, BBC, The New York Times, and Newsweek ignored. This is a poem for interrupting this program. And still you want a moment of silence for your dad? We could give you a li lifetimes of empty. The unmarked graves, the lost languages, the uprooted trees and histories, the dead stares on the faces of nameless children. Before I start this poem, we could be silent forever or just long enough to hunger for the dust to bury us, and you would still ask us for more of our silence. If you want a moment of silence, then stop the oil pumps, turn off the engines and televisions, sink the cruise ships, crash the stock markets. Unplug the marquee lights, delete the instant messages, derail the cha trains, the light rail transit. If you want a moment of silence, put a brick through the window of Taco Bell and pay the workers for wages lost. Tear down the liquor stores, the townhouses, the white houses, the jail houses, the penthouses, and the playboys. If you want a moment of silence, then take it on Super Bowl Sunday, the 4th of July, during Dayton's 13-hour sale or the next time your white guilt fills the room where my beautiful people have gathered. If you want a moment of silence, then take it now, before this poem begins, here, in the echo of my voice, in the pause between goose steps of the second hand, in the space between bodies and embrace, here is your silence, take it. But take it all, don't cut in line. Let your silence begin at the beginning of crime. But we, tonight, we will keep right on singing for our dead. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. 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 Manuel Ortiz, and it's available in the Freedom Archive website.